What's up, everybody? Back with another Bible study. Today, we're going to be going through another episode, another video here in the Words of Jesus series that we've been going through. Lord willing, we're going to be going through John 9 or 6 through 9. And if you haven't seen the last study in this series, John 1 through 5, go and check it out. Oh, you can find it at bit.ly, bit.ly slash Larry Newport. But before we get started, let me preach the gospel. Everyone is going to stand before God for judgment one day. Anyone who hasn't received forgiveness of sins and been made right with God is going to be judged and thrown into the lake of fire for the second death of body and soul. His first death is just the body. Second death is body and soul destroyed forever. God requires perfection in order to inherit eternal life, in order to be with him in his kingdom. None of us are perfect. We all sin and fall short of the glory of God. There's nothing we can do to earn a right standing with God, and that's why Jesus came. Jesus came 2,000 years ago. Born as a human, faced temptation just like us, but lived a perfect life. And although he was perfect and didn't deserve any punishment, the death that we deserve in a lake of fire for our sins, he died for us on the cross. So that through him, that death is taken away from us, and we receive eternal life through him. Our sin is taken away, and we receive his perfection that he lived out. Repent and believe the gospel. The word repent means to have a change of heart or a change of mind. Most of the time we see repent in the Bible, it means to turn away from your sins and turn to God. To truly give your life to God. To be willing to follow Him and turn, turn away from everything else. If you believe Jesus died on the cross for your sins. And rose three days later. And through His sacrifice is offering you eternal life. If you believe that. And you ask God to forgive you. And you truly mean it. You turn to Him for the forgiveness of your sins. He'll forgive you. He'll give you the Holy Spirit and He will give you eternal life. The Holy Spirit changes your heart and leads you to follow Him. The Holy Spirit gives you power, wisdom, discernment, and many other things. He'll forgive you. He'll give you the Holy Spirit and He will give you eternal life. Repent and believe the gospel. Give your life to Jesus today. There's not much time left. Now let's get into John chapter 6. And... Like I said, Lord willing, we're going to be going through 6 through 9 tonight. The first words of Jesus here is, Where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? Where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? And this is when Jesus fed. It says 5,000 men, plus women and children. So it's probably about 15,000 people. 10 to 15,000 people. He had crowds like that following him around. He was a problem. <laughs> to the to the governments, to the Jewish religious system. Where should we buy bread for these people to eat? And uh but he knew he knew what he knew what we, he was going to do. But that's what he said to his disciples to to see what they would say. And so Andrew, Peter's brother, said, "Well, we have five loaves of bread and two fish." Jesus said, "Have the people sit down." And then he multiplied the bread and the fish, and they were all fed. And Jesus said, gather the pieces that are left over. Let nothing be wasted. Let nothing be wasted. And started off with five loaves and two fish and ended up with 12 baskets. And, uh, yeah. Twelve baskets left of the bread, and uh, now representing, I, I believe, the t- twelve tribes of Israel. And you know, we in the same way. We need to look. I mean, the true food is the Word of God. The true bread is uh, the Word of God, and Jesus is the Word of God. He said, "I am, I am the bread of life." But he said, let nothing be wasted. 
you know, so, so much food these days is wasted. You know, there's 8,000, uh, I saw it the other day, 8,000 kids die every day of hunger. 8,000 kids starve to death every day, not even, not including the, the adults. And we here in America waste so much food. Restaurants waste so much food. You know, I wish there was something I could do. I mean, I don't have much. I mean, I have I have food to eat. I'm blessed. I have a car to drive. I'm blessed. But you know, I just. I just wish there was something I could do to help. People are dying of hunger every day. And, you know, the governments don't care. They don't care. None of them. They're all servants of Satan. And, you know, all all the people, everyone in the world could be fed, could be well fed. It's just not done. It's just not done. Uh, the governments could have that done. But they don't want to. They'd rather spend money on worthless things. But, uh... One more time it says, Gather the pieces that are left over, let nothing be wasted. And we need to look at the Word of God in the same way. Let n- nothing be wasted. Just truly seek the word of God, truly, truly seek to to consume his word, to understand his word, to take it in and and um, you know, there's nothing like the word of God and to be honest, I've been slacking a little bit uh, concerning staying in the word as much as I could I know I may listen Besides these Bible studies, I most of the time I listen. I listen to the Word on the Bible app. But I used to listen more than I listen now, and it's, I mean, it's very important. I mean, listening to the Word, reading the Word, builds our faith, builds our relationship with God. But here in these, the next words of Jesus here in chapter 6 is when He was walking on the water. And they saw Him, and they... They thought it was a spirit. They, they thought they didn't know what it was and didn't realize it was him. He, he said, it, it is I, do not be afraid. And then they got to the other side of the lake. And uh, they asked him, how did you get here? Because they didn't, they didn't see him get in the boat with the disciples. And then they went to the other side of the lake. And actually, um, I believe in one of the other versions of the story, in one of the other Gospels, it says, instantly, they were on the, they were at the shore. Instantly, uh, basically, they just transported. Once he got on the boat, they just transported to where, where they were going. Just instantly. But Jesus said, I tell you the truth. You were looking for me. Not because you saw miraculous signs, but because you ate of the loaves and had your fill. And spiritually, this, the same way. This is what we uh, actually need to do spiritually. Um, seek him. Well, we need to seek him for him. But... We need, to, we need to seek the word. We need to stay in the word. I tell you the truth. You you were looking for me, not because you saw the miraculous signs, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. Do not work for the food that spoils, but for the food that endures to eternal life. Heavenly food. But, the, but for the food who, which endures, that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. And he is the bread of life. But he is also the word. He is the word of God. The, the actual word. I mean, 
mean, and this, this is how we know God. By truly seeking Him, by studying His Word. So do not work for the food that spoils, but for the food that endures to eternal life, which, which the Son of Man will give you. His bre The bread of life, Him, He said, represents His body that was broken for the sins of the world to give us eternal life. But the food before the food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. On him, God the Father has placed his seal of approval. And then, so they asked him, what, we, what must we do to do the work that God requires? And Jesus said, the work of God is this, to believe in the one whom he has sent. He just wants, I mean, it's all about faith. It's always been about faith. But God wants us to believe in him, to believe in Jesus, to believe in the one that the, the Father wants us to believe in the one, believe in his son. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that so whoever believes in him will have everlasting life. He, he offered his son as a sacrifice for our sins. And people reject it. Or people ignore it and try to try to make their own way, try to earn their way into heaven. And don't get me wrong, obedience is very important, very, very, very important. And this is something that's downplayed in modern Christianity, obedience to God. We need to follow Him. We need to keep His commandments. We need to walk in all His ways. We need to fear Him, fear His punishment. But we can't earn our own salvation. We can't earn our way into the kingdom of heaven. It's only through His blood, through the sacrifice that He made, that we receive His righteousness, His perfection that He lived out through faith. And we're made right with God through Him. And then we, once we come to faith and our sins are cleansed, we follow Him and do our best to never sin again. And none of us are perfect. We all fall short here and there. But we need to be as blameless as possible. Jesus said, be perfect as your, as your Father in Heaven is perfect. And that's what we need to try to do. The work of God is this, to believe in the one whom, whom He has sent. And so they asked him about the man, and Jesus said, I tell you the truth, it is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. He who comes down from heaven and gives life, life to the world. Jesus pre-existed. He, he, was a, he was back in the beginning with the Father. Uh, the Bible says he was brought, begotten or brought forth from the Father. Uh, wh whatever that means exactly, I'm not sure. But, you know, the Father f brought forth the Son as a God, as God as well. Um, you know, God put it in a way that that we can understand it with the family, with the father and son. You know, the father's the head of the household, but he gave all all things into the hand, hand of the son. So he basically gave the son the house. Jesus said, "I tell you the truth." It is not Moses who has given you the bread of bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. Speaking about himself. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never go hungry. And he who believes in me will never be thirsty. And this is, he's the bread of life. See, the communion is based on this. The, the bread at the communion is based on, it represents his broken body, his body that was broken for us. And uh, the wine represents his blood that was spilled for us. He said, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never go hungry, and he who believes in me will never be thirsty. But as I told you, you have seen me, and still you do not believe. All that the Father gives me will come to me. And whoever comes to me, I will never drive away. Hallelujah. We can drive ourselves away. We can stop following God. We can rebel against Him. And He'll let us go. He's not going to force us. 
And but don't get me wrong, saying he'll let us go, because he is the good shepherd, and the good shepherd leaves the ninety nine to get the one. So he he calls us back, but we can leave him. We can rebel against him to the point of blaspheming the spirit eventually. We need to be very careful. It says, for, all, for I have come down from heaven, or all that the Father gives me I will come to me, and whoever comes to me I will never drive away. Hallelujah. For I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I shall lose none of that none of all that he has given me, but raise them up at the last day. This is the will of him who sent me, that I shall lose none that he has given me. But raise them up at the last day. And the last day, you know, a day to the Lord is a thousand years. And a thousand years one day. God has a 7,000 year plan for mankind. 6,000 years and then the millennial reign of Christ. And at that last day, that's when God is going to resurrect his people. You know, the day of the Lord. And the day of the Lord is also, also sp speaking of the tribulation time. The last day. And, you know, you know it's possible... There's another fulfillment of this, the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles or something. But the last day, I believe, represents the millennial reign. The day of the Lord. The Lord's day. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I shall lose none of those that he has given me, but raise them up at the last day. For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in Him shall have eternal life. And I will raise Him up at the last day. One more time. For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in Him shall have eternal life. And I will raise Him up at the last day. Hallelujah. And they started to grumble against Him because of the stuff He was saying. And He said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. And they were like, is this, is this not Jesus, uh, whose mother and father we know, Mary and Joseph? And how can he say, I, can't, I came down from heaven? Jesus said, stop grumbling among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. And I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, they will all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to the Father and learns from him comes to me. No one has seen the Father except the one who is from God. And I touched on this um, in the last Exodus study. And I actually, I don't, I don't think I put that one out yet. That uh, it's Jesus. I believe it's Jesus on the mountain giving Moses the Ten Commandments. I mean, because it says he... He saw God, and then there's another scripture that mentions the Moses and Joshua, I believe, and the 70 elders said they saw God. May not have seen his face, but they saw him. No one has seen the Father except the one who is from God. Only he has seen the Father. I tell you the truth. He who believes has eternal life. I'll tell you the truth. He who believes has eternal life. Hallelujah. I am the bread of life. Your forefathers ate the manna in the desert, yet they died. But here is the bread that comes down from heaven, which a man may eat and not die. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. 
So in other words, if we accept his sacrifice, if we believe in him, believe that he's the Messiah and the Savior, and accept his sacrifice that he made for us, that's eating the bread of life. By believing in him, accepting his uh, sacrifice. Said, if anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Hallelujah. God is great. Jesus said, I tell you the truth. Unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. And I will raise him up at the last day. And again, the... This represents accepting his sacrifice, believing in him and accepting his sacrifice. The, his blood was spilled for us and his flesh was broken for us. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. And I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is real food and my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father. So the one who feeds me, or the one who feeds on me, will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Your forefathers ate the manna and died. But he who feeds on this bread will live forever. He who feeds on this bread, in other words, accepts his sacrifice and believes in him, will live forever. Hallelujah. God is great. And uh, so his, his, his disciples were saying, this is a hard teaching. Like, who can accept this? So, like, basically, what do, you even, what do you even mean? And he said, does this offend you? What if you see the Son of Man ascend to where he was before? The spirit gives life. The flesh counts for nothing. The spirit and the flesh. And we need to walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. Walking in the flesh is according to our own desires, our own, the way we want to live, uh, our own sinful nature. But we need to walk according to the spirit, according to the ways of God. So the spirit gives life, the flesh counts for nothing. The words I have spoken to you are spirit, and they are life. Yet there are some of you who do not believe. And he was speaking about Judas. And Jesus said, This is why I told you that no one can come to me unless the Father has enabled him. And it says, From this time many of his disciples turned back and no longer followed him. Because of the stuff he was saying, and they, you know, I guess they didn't understand. And Jesus said, This is why I told you that no one can come to me unless the Father has enabled him. Or this next line it says, You do not want to leave too, do you? Asking his 12 disciples. And of course they didn't. And Jesus said, have I not chosen you, the twelve? Yet one of you is a devil. And that's the end of chapter 6. And he was speaking about Judas. Chapter 7. So, chapter 7 is the Feast of Tabernacles and his disciples were wanted him to go and make himself known and uh, go to the Feast of Tabernacles and speak up. And Jesus said, The right time for me has not yet come. For you, any time is right. The world, can, the world cannot hate you, but it hates me because I testify that, that what it does is evil. You go to the feast. I am not yet going to this feast. Because for me, the right time has not yet come. But then he ended up showing up anyway. 
Said the time has not yet come, but he showed up anyway secretly. And it said, halfway through the feast, which would be, uh, you know, a couple days into the Feast of Tabernacles. Halfway through the feast, he went to the temple, went to the temple courts and began to teach. And he said, my teaching is not of my own, is not my own. It comes from him who sent me. If anyone chooses to do God's will, he will find out whether my teaching comes from God or whether I speak on my own. He who speaks on his own does so to gain honor for himself. But he who works for the, for the honor of him who sent him is a man of truth. So we need to not care about what other people think. We need to not try to impress people. We need to try to impress God and just do just to do his will at all times regardless of what happens. He who speaks on his own does so to gain honor for himself. But he who works for the honor of the one who sent him, we need to not care about anything for ourselves. We need to work for God's honor. He who works for the honor of him, who, the one who sent him, is a man of truth. There is nothing false about him. Has not Moses given you the law? Yet none of you keeps the law. Why are you trying to kill me? Well, because they were, they had been wanting to kill him and trying to kill him said none of you keeps the law was they as we read in, in another passage they were keeping their traditions over top of the law of God they were forsaking the law of God and you know, keeping their traditions they weren't keeping the words of Moses as they were supposed to they were following the traditions of the elders the, the Talmud the Jewish law, the Jewish traditions, it's not the law of God, it's different. And so, so the, the crowd, the people in the crowd, when he was there preaching at the, at the temple of the Feast of Tabernacles said, I did one, uh, said, you're a demon possessed. He was trying to kill you. And Jesus said, I did one miracle. And you are all astonished. Yet because Moses gave you circumcision, though it actually did not come from Moses, but from the patriarchs, you circumcise a child on the Sabbath. Now if a child can be circumcised on the Sabbath, so that the law of Moses may not be broken, why are you angry with me for healing a whole man on the Sabbath? Stop, stop judging by mere appearances and make a right judgment. See... See, in order to keep the, as he just said, in order to keep the circumcision, in order for circumcisions to happen on the eighth day, some of them had to happen on the Sabbath day. And that's, that's work. They basically, they were being hypocrite, hypocrites. They were, they did that, but then they got mad because someone's, he, because he was healing somebody on the Sabbath. I mean, healing somebody is more important than uh, somebody being circumcised on a specific day. And so... So Jesus said... Well, they, they were saying, well, we don't... We don't know. This isn't in the Christ. We we don't know. We know where this. Is, where, we know where he's from. And Jesus said, "Yes." Or well, actually, no. It says, uh, "I'll just read it." It says, uh, "But we know. We know where this man is from. But when the Christ comes, no one will know where he's from." Jesus said, "Yes, you know me, and you know where I am from. I am not here on my own, but the." But he who sent me is true, and you do not know him. But I know him, because I am from him, and he sent me. Speaking about the Father. And then he said, uh, because it says the Pharisee sent the temple guards to arrest him. Jesus said, I am with you for only a short time, and then I will go to the one who sent me. 
You will look for me, but you will not find me. And where I am, you cannot come. And so they, they were like, where, where's he going to go? Is he going to go to go among the Greeks and teach them? And Jesus said, you will look for me, but you will not find me. Where I am, you cannot come. And so on the last day of the feast, uh, the eighth day of the Feast of Tabernacles, the last great day, Jesus stood up and said in a loud voice, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, streams of living water will flow from within him. And the next line, I'll just read the next line. It says, By this he meant the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were later to receive. The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the living water. And this is also, <coughs> we also see this in, um, throughout the Bible. It's one of the, one of the many symbol, uh, symbolisms in the Bible, uh, water representing, well, water can represent people, water can represent the Holy Spirit. But the living water here is the Holy Spirit. He said, if anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. For whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, streams of living water will flow from within him. And that's the end of uh, chapter 7, as far as the words of Jesus here. Let's get into chapter 8. This is uh, where the woman was caught caught in adultery and they were trying to trap him by by allowing them to stone her even though the requirements for stoning somebody hadn't occurred. Basically, it, they needed uh, two or more witnesses um, and uh, the man was supposed to be there too, but they just tr just brought her and said, and basically they were being false witnesses. And uh, Jesus said, "If any one of you is without sin, let him be the first to throw the stone at her." And and people people look at look at this as uh, a show of God's mercy, which it, or Jesus' mercy, which it is, but. <clears throat> but at the, at the same time they didn't have grounds to stone this woman and he knew that they were trying to trap him and have him say yeah it's okay he said if any one of you is without sin let him first throw the stone at her and he he was writing on the ground right before he said that and right after he said that uh, if you're out without sin cast the first stone and he was writing on the ground and um, what he was writing we don't know uh, maybe he was referencing a scripture maybe he was writing down a scripture or a reference to a scripture regarding um, this type of situation what what was required and how you know he's ever trying to trap him and so they all they all ended up leaving Probably partially not only because of what he said, but what he was writing on the ground. And uh, Jesus said, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No one, sir, she said. Then neither do I condemn you. Go now and leave your life of sin. See, God has mercy. The mercy of Jesus if we will only turn to him. He'll forgive, he'll forgive us. He'll, he won't condemn us. The Bible says uh, God didn't send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save it. But at the same time, He said, Then neither do I condemn you. But then at the same time, He said, Go now and leave your life of sin. That's uh, the repent part. Then Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So I am the light of the world. Hallelujah. 
Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And so they said, the Pharisees said, uh, you're just, you're, you're, you're uh, basically, you're, you're just your own witness. You, you don't have anybody else vouching for you saying this. You're your own witness. And, and it says your testimony is not valid. Jesus answered, even if I testify on my own behalf, my testimony is valid. For I know where I came from and I know where I'm going. But you have no idea where I come from or where I'm going. You judge by human standards. I pass judgment on no one. I pass judgment on no one. But if I do judge, my decisions are right because I am not alone. I stand with the Father who sent me. In your own law, it is written that a testimony that, that the testimony of two or three men is valid. I am one who testifies for myself. My other witness is the Father who sent me. Hallelujah. They said, and they said, where is your father? He said, you know, you don't know me or my father. If you knew me, you would know my father also. And he said to them, I am going away and you will look for me and you will die in your sin. Where I go, you cannot come. And they said, well, will he kill himself? That, is that why he says where I, where I go? You cannot come? But Jesus continued. He said, you are from below. I am from above. <laughs> he, was, he was just pretty much making it clear at this point. He said, you are from below. I am from above. You are from this world. I am not of this world. I told you that you will die in your sins if you do not believe that I am the, that I am the one whom I claim to be. You will indeed die in your sins. It's about believing in him it's about believing in Jesus and who he is and what, what he did for us then they said who are you he said just as I've been claiming from just as I've been claiming all along I have much to say in judgment of you but he who sent me is reliable and what I have heard from him I tell the world And Jesus said, when you have lifted up the Son of Man, and speaking about his crucifixion, he said, when you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am the one, uh, the one I claim to be, and that I do nothing on my own, but I speak just what the Father has taught me. The one who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, for I, for I always do what pleases him. And that was a... Uh, you know, the way he said that together, the one who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, for I always do what pleases him. But it, and the same with us. If we always do what pleases him, he's not going to leave us. But, uh, but if we start sinning, living a life of sin, he's not going to be with us in the same way that uh, he would if we're truly following him. And so Jesus said to the Jews who believed, he said, if you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. He is the truth. So then we will know, then you will know him and he will set you free. Hallelujah. Jesus said, I tell you the truth. Everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now a slave has no permanent place in a family, in a family. But a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, then you will be free indeed. I know you are Abraham's descendants, yet you are yet you are ready to kill me, because you have no room, because you have no room for my word. I am telling you what I have seen in the Father's presence, and you do what you have heard from your father. They said Abraham is our father. Jesus said, if you were Abraham's children. Then you would do the things that Abraham did. As it is, you were determined to kill me, a man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. Abraham did not do these things. You are doing the things that your own father does. Jesus said it. And they said, the only father we have is God himself. 
And Jesus said, if God were your father, you would love me. For I came from God, and now I am here. For I have not come on my own, but he sent me. Why is my language not, not clear to you? Because you are unable to hear what I say. You belong to your father, the devil. And, and you want to carry out your father's desire. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks of his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Yet because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Can any of you prove me guilty of sin? If I am telling the, telling the truth, why do you not believe me? He who belongs to God hears what God says. The reason that you do not hear is that you do not belong to God. And once, give me one second, I gotta have to move my car. So he said, he who belongs to God hears what God says. The reason you do not hear is that you do not belong to God. We need to make sure we're hearing the Lord. We need to make sure we're following the Lord. We need to make sure we're hearing his voice and following and not being led astray. And so they answered him and they said, Aren't we right in saying that you are Samaritan and demon-possessed? And Jesus said, I am not possessed by a demon, but I honor my Father, and you dishonor me. I am not seeking glory for myself. There is one who seeks it, and he is the judge. I tell you the truth, if anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. Hallelujah. He said, I tell you the truth, if anyone seeks my word... Or if anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. And so it's about belief. It's about believing in God, but it's about believing in the in Jesus and his sacrifice that he made for us. But we need to keep his word as well. We need to follow him. Keep his commandments. I mean, uh, and it's all about love. Love is the most important thing. All of God's commandments boil down to love. Loving God and loving our neighbor. They're all, all his commandments are based on love. I tell you the truth. If anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so they, they responded to that saying... Like, who do you think you are? Because of, because of what he was saying. If anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. So who do you think you are? Jesus said, if I glorify myself, my glory means nothing. My father, whom you claim as your God, is the one who glorifies me. Though you do not know him, I know him. And if I said I did not, I would be a liar like you. But I do know him and I keep his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced at the thought of seeing my day. He saw it and was glad. Said Abraham rejoiced at the thought of seeing my day. Said he saw it and was glad. Now Abraham was uh There's an extra biblical book called The Apocalypse of Apocalypse of Abraham, I believe. To where he he saw a vision, you know, of, of Jesus in the future. And whether that's what is speaking of here or not, or whether he saw it from his soul saw it from Sheol, I'm not sure exactly 
what that's referencing. So your father Abraham rejoiced at the thought of seeing my day. He saw it and was glad. He said, you're not 50, not even 50 years old. Have you seen Abraham? He said, I tell you the truth. Before Abraham was born, I am. <laughs> Before Abraham was born, I am. In other words, he's saying, I was, I'm God. I am the I am from Moses. Before even Abraham was born, I am. He's saying, I, I, I am God. I am that I am. From even before Abraham. And when he said that, they picked up stones and were about to stone him. And that's the end of chapter 8. Chapter 9. So, there's a blind man. And his disciples asked him, Who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? And Jesus said, Neither this man nor his parents sinned, nor his parents sinned. But this happened so that, so that the work of God might be displayed in his life. As long as it is day, we must do the work of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. And so this is, I believe this is a reference, also a reference to the, the day and night, the day being the time that we're living in now and night being the tribulation time. As long as it is, as it is day, we must do the work of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Hallelujah. And all light is going to be taken out of the world during the tribulation time. And the light is our obedience to God. Our shining his light by obeying him and doing his will and his works. We are the lamps. The Holy Spirit is the oil which produces the light. And so, it says he spit on the ground and made some mud with the made some mud and put it on the guy, put it on his eyes and said, "Go, wash in the pool of Siloam." And of course, he was healed once he obeyed that commandment and went and washed washed his uh eyes off and so so we're almost done with chapter 9 here and so one of the blind one of the blind men that he healed um was cast out by the Pharisees and uh, rejected by him and and G Jesus found him it says when Jesus heard that he that they had thrown him out he found him and said do you believe in the son of man and he, he said who is he so that I might believe in him and he said you have, you have now seen him. You have now seen him because his eyes were healed. You have now seen him. In fact, he is the one speaking with you. And the, the guy said, Lord, I believe. Jesus said, for judgment I have come into this world so that the blind will see and those who see will become blind. In other words, those who... Speaking about the the Pharisees and the, and the people who had knowledge of God's word and stuff who were able to see somewhat were blinded to him blinded to the truth of his coming the truth that he was the Messiah for judgment I have come into the, this world so that the blind will see and those who see will become blind and the Pharisees who were with him said what are we blind too? Jesus said, if you were blind, you would not be guilty of sin. But now that you claim that you can see, your guilt remains. But 
I mean, they were blind of him, but he said, but they claimed that they can see. They they claimed that they knew that he they the knew God and knew knew the word of God and they still rejected him. And so he said, but now that you claim that you can see, your guilt remains because they rejected him. And that's the end of chapter nine. And I'll, I'll just stop there for right now. God just let me go through six through nine. And, you know, the word of God is powerful. God is great. We need to make sure we're not blinded. We need to make sure that we can see, that we have eyes to see and ears to hear, that we're not being led astray, that we're not being deceived by this world, by, by Satan. And we need to serve God. We need, we need to eat that bread of life and drink the, uh, the wine. We need to accept his sacrifice, accept him into our heart. Brothers and sisters, let's stay strong in faith. Let's endure to the end. Let's shine his light. Let's be the, he is the light of the world, but he also said, you are the light of the world. Let's shine his light. Let's show his love. Let's preach the gospel. Let's speak his word. And more importantly, let's live his word. Let's walk in all his ways and serve him with all our heart. Let's be prepared for the coming of the Lord. And if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, turn to him. Eat this bread of life. Drink this wine. Accept his sacrifice that he made for you. He didn't have to do it. He pre-existed. He was the I am. Back in Genesis. Or back in uh, Exodus. And it's only through him. Through his sacrifice that he made for us. That we can be saved. That we can receive eternal life. But his promises are true. The word of God is true. And... This time is coming upon us very soon. Night is coming when no man can work. The day is almost over. We're almost at the night before the next day, the last day, the great day of the Lord. Repent and believe the gospel. Give your life to Jesus today. There's not much time left. And that's the end of this Words of Jesus study. Thank you guys for tuning in. Love y'all. Shalom.